good morning. I think we will get started. Thank you very much for coming uh, to our pediatric uveitis grand rounds. It's not just kid stuff or the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and or the potentially really horrible. Presented by uh, Dr. Bird, Renee Choi, James Bell, and James Zimmerman, if we have time. So just to kind of lay the groundwork a little bit, um, I think pediatric uveitis is not just uveitis for kids. Uh, it, it, it is a topic that deserves special attention because of the unique diagnostic management and therapeutic dilemmas inherent in this population. The history and review of systems uh, and a complete ocular examination can be very difficult to obtain <coughs> and frequently will require examination under anesthesia. The differential diagnosis varies with age, uh, with an overrepresentation of infectious etiologies, the presence of pediatric specific masquerade syndromes, such as juvenile xanthogranuloma, uh, acute myelogenous leukemia or retinoblastoma, and unique endogenous syndrome, syndromes like Kawasaki's disease uh, or juvenile idiopathic arthritis, and then atypical presentations of diseases that are otherwise familiar in adults, such as sarcoidosis in children, which is different, and this actually affects the laboratories that might, one might order in working these kids up. The uh, management issues include the fact that these diseases are insidious and in onset, chronic and recurrent, with the frequent development of complications. The presence of complications at presentation is a risk for further complications, and I think is a graphic testimony uh, to the uh, diagnostic delay and screening failure uh, in many of these kids. And then, of course, there's the unique risk of amblyopia in kids. Uh, uveitis uh, in children is about fourfold less frequent than it is in adults, but represents almost 13% of uveitis in a tertiary population with about uh, 20,000 kids uh, being affected with JIA alone. Um, complications uh, reducing visual outcome include cataract, macular edema, hypotony, glaucoma, vitreous opacity, macular scar. These complications are more common in patients with infectious etiologies and in patients with more severe disease, just as those with posterior and panuveitis. And visual impairment and, and severe visual loss is not uncommon. You think we can think about the differential diagnosis as we do in a very simplistic but actually effective uh, manner, such as infectious diseases, the most common being in anterior uveitis being the herpes group of uh, uh, viruses, posterior uveitis, toxoplasmosis, again, is, as in adults, the most in common infectious etiology, but toxocariasis is another player that you see in kids. For non-infectious diseases, the most common systemic association of anterior uveitis in children is that associated with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, followed by TINU, tubular interstitial nephritis and uveitis syndrome, and then less common diseases such as Kawasaki's. Intermediate uveitis can represent up to 15 to 20 percent of kids with uh, uh, uveitis in a, in a <coughs> pediatric population, and of course, as I mentioned, the masquerade syndromes such as uh, retinoblastoma or leukemia. One may also think about the differential diagnosis in terms of the age of presentation. For example, an infant might be more uh, uh, likely to present with a congenital infectious syndrome, such as rubella, as you see here, whereas a child, maybe 2 to 10, would be more uh, apt to present with an acquired infection, such as uh, toxocariasis, or an endogenous uh, syndrome, such as juvenile idiopathic arthritis and uveitis-associated uh, disease. Adolescents might present with toxoplasmosis or even uh, with a multifocal choroiditis um, or other uh, infectious uh, entities uh, such as Dusen uh, or, or other multifocal choroiditis. Therapeutic dilemmas re uh, surround the concerns using corticosteroids, both in terms of their ocular hypertensive uh, and cataractogenic uh, effects using frequent topical steroids, and then growth retardation using chronic corticosteroids in children. This is uh, the other side of this coin is therapeutic timidity, uh, which is associated with um, concerns using uh, non steroidal uh, anti inflammatory medications or immunomodulation due to the uh, potential toxicity associated with these medications. And then, of course, there's the greater surgical risks associated with children because they have more exuberant uh, inflammatory response to surgery. And then there are certain syndromes, such as JIA, in which there are just inherently more complications surgically. So the therapeutic approach, as in adults, is to eliminate inflammation, uh, to institute appropriate antimicrobial therapy in the face of an infection, and then a stepladder graded algorithm, uh, depending on the clinical response, starting with aggressive, topical, 
uh, steroids followed by oral non steroidals in certain select groups of patients who might otherwise be on these medications, such as kids with arthritic syndromes, periocular and intravitreous uh, steroids, brief, well-defined periods of corticosteroid use, and then the early introduction of steroid-sparing immunomodulation uh, with both conventional and biological agents. So Julia is going to uh, uh, present our first case, which illustrates uh, some of these points.